But let me begin by saying uh, many of us would know uh, about the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I say that prayer most days, I guess. And it's not really the Lord's Prayer. You've heard me say it. It's a disciples' prayer because it was the disciples that came to Jesus and said, Lord, would you teach us how to pray? That heard John's disciples asking John uh, if, they, if he would teach them. And so uh, Jesus disciples, hey, Lord, would you teach us how to pray? And so he said what is known as the Lord's Prayer. But the Lord's Prayer, his genuine prayer, if I can use that term, from his heart is found in John chapter 17. And I want to read it. It's a great prayer. And I'm going to read the whole chapter, if you don't mind, because it talks about uh, really what I need to talk about today. In John chapter 17, verse 1, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. You know, we are here to glory. By God. I was saying to Pastor Joe, and didn't he do a great job on the notices as he does each week? You know, he just does those off the top of his head. There's nothing written at the back there. He's not reading it. I'm not quite sure how he does it, but in any case, he does a fantastic job at it. But I uh, was saying to Pastor Joe this morning, you know, for 40 years I've been saying, Lord, draw people out, draw people out, draw people out. I can't pray that. I'm praying, Lord, get them to watch online, get them to watch online. It's like crazy, but we're here to glorify. God. Amen. And that's what Jesus came to do. Your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority, we sang about it and Cain did a great job as well, wasn't it? He just, when he spoke about that, that hymn, uh, I mean, he just spoke so well about it. Authority over all flesh that he sh should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life that you may know that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. I've glorified you on the earth. I've finished the work. Imagine that, 33 years of age, finish the work which you have given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you've given me out of this world. They are yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now, verse 7 says, they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given, them to, I have given to them the words which you have given me and they have received them and have surely and known and surely that I've come forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. Hallelujah. He who believes in Jesus has life and life abundantly. Amen. Verse 9 is such an interesting verse, particularly for me as a bit of an evangelist, but also primarily, of course, I'm a pastor. I'm here to shepherd the flock. And verse 9 says, Jesus says, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. I mean, think about that. That is such an, an interesting verse, particularly from an evangelistic perspective. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. So there's a time to reach out to the world, but there's a time to care for the flock. And today, I believe, is one of those times. Now I'm no longer in the world, and these are in the world. I came to you. I come to you, Holy Father. Father, keep them through your name, those whom you've given me, that they may be one, they may be one. Can I say that again? They may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I've kept, and none of them, none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the Scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they're not of this world just as I am not of this world. I do not pray that you would take them out of this world. That's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> come Lord Jesus, just kidding. But that you would keep them from the evil one. They are not of this world, just as I am not of this world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Nearly through verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm one of them and so are you. Believe in me through your word that they all may be one as you, Father, are me and I and you that they may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you have given me, I've given them that they may be one. You getting the message here this morning? Just as we are one. 
Hallelujah. I in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that you've sent me and have loved me as you have loved, loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me from the found, and love me before the foundation of the world. We know the Scriptures where God chose us uh, and saw us from the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known you, you sent me, and have, I have declared them in your name and will declare it, Finishing up, that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. What a prayer that is. What a thought that is, that they may be one. He's talking about us, City Impact Church, and the church, obviously, throughout the world, talking about us as being one. This is a great thought. Let me give you another great thought. Christmas is coming. What's that got to do with it? Well, it's a great thought, right? Merry Christmas. That's what we say. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. With Christmas around the corner, it tells us that this year has nearly ticked by. And of course, as a team, we're thinking, what can we do about Christmas this year? A driving Christmas Eve service. And what can we do with a Christmas Day service, if anything, uh, under the traffic light system? And so enough to say it's going to be very difficult this Christmas. A little different, I know. But let's be honest, this year... 2021, what a year it has been. It's like it's been robbed from us. There's a graphic that comes up on your screen. I'm gonna put it up on my birthday. In fact, Michelle Bensley put it up on her birthday or sent it to me on her birthday. And it's so true, isn't it? It's like we've never had this year really. So it doesn't count, right? And particularly any travel plans uh, overseas more so, but even leaving Auckland. I don't know about you, church, but every morning I wake up and it's like a bad dream. I'm thinking, is this surreal? Is this, is this really happening to us, you know? And so even talking in the natural, let's just think about it for a moment. When we turn the page from 2020 to 2021, I didn't buy into it, I have to confess, but many were declaring Happy New Year. They were thinking and saying that they were saying goodbye to the world first year of their lives, 2020, when COVID first started. They thought they were going to put it all behind them. But let's be honest, 2021 has turned in just as bad, if not worse. No wonder the Lord gave me at the beginning of the year, Revelation 3, 2, wake up and strengthen that which remains. Amen. And that's still ringing in my heart. We need to be as strong as ever. And the good news, hallelujah, the good news is always good news. It doesn't sell as you would have saw in one of my posts, but we are one year closer to the Lord's return. Amen. And Jesus said, lift up your heads and rejoice. Praise the Lord. So in the natural, as we turn the page from 2021 to 2022, because of New Year's resolutions and so forth, people think magically this year will disappear and uh, everything's gonna become good overnight. But can I ask you, will it get better or will it get worse? If you read the newspaper today about the new variant, you would think, well, maybe it could get worse. I'm not here to bring bra uh, um, bad news to you this morning. I'm just talking of the reality of what we find ourselves living in and how we're going to navigate this as a church, I think we all have to come to realise that this brave new world is going to be with us for a little while longer. How long? I don't know. Maybe you do, but I love the verse that it came to pass. Everybody say, it came to pass. Sooner or later, one way or another, one way or another, it'll come to pass. But until then, obviously, we need to live, we need to navigate some very Tricky waters. And so Christmas is coming. The new year is coming and the traffic light system is coming, ready or not, December 3rd, right? And of course, we know that that was rushed through Parliament in 24 hours. It should have taken seven months, but because this government's got the majority, they just shoved these things through like they did with the abortion, conversion therapy, all these things, youth and that, they all just come through so quickly. But the thing is, is that the funny thing was, I was writing to a whole lot of MPs, uh, Christian MPs, uh, particularly in the National Party, and I was saying, guys, 
are you awake to what's happening in our country? I know they are. And it was quite a lengthy uh, letter, but it was a good letter, just saying, come on, we've got to do something about this and so forth. And I was about to send it out on Wednesday, had Nadia, my PA, write the letter. And she was a bit tied up in the afternoon. So I said, oh, let's leave it till Thursday morning. And uh, if you know anything about what's happened in the country Wednesday night, of course, we won't go into it, but the Judith Collins, Simon Bridges, uh, Fasasco and, and so forth. So just as well, we waited because not only would have got lost, but it was a little bit irrelevant to that particular point of time. But uh, enough to say, um, we know that the traffic light system is about to come upon us and uh, next Sunday the 5th and you know, I'm going to be talking today and next Sunday the 5th uh, because this starts on December the 3rd. I need to talk about something that I wish I didn't have to. I've been trying to keep it out of the church on Sunday. I've been talking about a few things on my Facebook page, as you know, and I don't want to talk about COVID or the vaccine per se. I want to talk about how we will navigate through the traffic light system here at City Impact Church. One thing I do know, City Impact Church, please hear me right now, COVID is not our enemy. COVID is not our enemy. Division is our enemy. Division is our enemy. And we know where division comes from, right? The one who comes to rob, kill and destroy. So here at City Impact Church, how are we going to navigate the future with the coming traffic light system? And I think everybody is aware of some of the ramifications of that, the red, orange and green. I don't wanna go into it right now today. But you know, as a country, even under red, Auckland probably, Orange, the rest of the parts of the country. And obviously we've got campuses down there. We've got campuses meeting in picture theatres, all kinds of things. And I understand there's gonna be no green just yet. But to be honest, I have to say, my heart has been very heavy and it has been for some time. Uh, why is it heavy? It's because I do love you all. I think you know that. Um, and, and I sincerely love you. And I know that like every pastor in New Zealand, I will not be able to please you all. In fact, another pastor of a large church is gonna be talking this morning, maybe not talking the same thing as I'm talking, but he's talking to his church about how they're gonna navigate. And he put out in his post, I know I won't be able to please you all. There'll be some people upset. And uh, we have this dilemma. But you know that I've said it before, to be honest, I'm not here to please people. Now, I don't wanna be harsh with that. I'm here to please God. But I am here to serve people. I'm here to shepherd you. I'm here as your pastor to try to help us journey together and to be one people over this time. I also know, and let me just say, I also know that you love me and Bev, otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? So I wanna thank you for that. And I know you love your church, City Impact Church, the campus pastors. And I do sincerely thank you for your love, support and your trust. And I pray your understanding as we talk about some practical things. I have to say, over 40 years of pastoring, I've never seen anything like this. And it's new territory for every one of us, every one of us. And I'll be honest with you, I've been talking with many pastors and many pastors are struggling right now. In fact, in America, 36% of pastors are resigning because they're at such a dilemma on what they can do. Their churches are fighting. People are so opinionated over this. People are so divisive over this and so forth. And it is a problem. And I know, so I know we're not the only ones, but many of you, also are struggling right now. Many of your businesses are struggling right now, even in families and work and friends and colleagues and all kinds of things. So it's not just churches that are having to work through this. I'm not alone in having to work through this. But probably like you, I've watched more Zooms. I've watched more clips. I've read more emails and sent more emails than I ever have done in my whole life. Information coming in, misinformation coming in from all sides, right? I've been communicating with many MPs over this time. I've been communicating with many pastors over this time, many organisations over this time and in the coming and current season, both here in New Zealand and around the world. And talking about pastors here in New Zealand, uh, I know most of you would know at this time, Pastor Paul is facing a very serious situation and uh, I wanna pray for him even right now, just in the midst of this, as churches are praying. In fact, many of us pastors are calling a, a national day of prayer and fasting for Pastor Paul and a life church and Maria Hart is with them and uh, as he's facing a very serious life-threatening situation and so we want to pray and speak healing over his life. Amen. And so Father, we do pray right now for Pastor Paul. We pray as he undergoes, Lord, even that operation, this life-saving operation this week, we speak healing, we speak life over him, we speak health over him. Father, we declare it. We 
We pray for Marie, the family, the church there, Lord. We pray that you would encourage them and you would strengthen them, Father. And Lord, bring Paul through this, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so there's lots of things happening, not just what we're talking about this morning. In, in many quarters as I'm communicating around, and, and you know, when I think about the issue of the day, I, you kind of think, well, how much worse can it get? And I guess for the last days, for the return of Jesus, this is pretty good training ground. You've got to uh, kind of admit that, right? And we know there are many opinions, many thoughts, many stances on the issues at hand. But you know, as a church, we must rally around the Word of God. We must come, I said, around the Word of God. We must rally around Jesus in order to move forward. Amen. Many pastors, like many businesses, as I've mentioned, and other sectors of society, are seemingly in a bit of a no-win situation, as I've mentioned, because obviously you cannot please everybody. But I trust you know, City Impact Church, that my heart is for you, for your spiritual well-being, for your physical well-being, and for your emotional well-being. And we will work through this as a church. We will come through this, but we must stay together. We must be one as Jesus prayed we're one, irrespective of your opinions, irrespective of my opinions, We've got to, I believe, do it according to the Word of God and apply the Word of God above anything else that our land would try to put upon us. And we must stay together. Amen. So as a shepherd of the flock, I want to look after all the flock and I want to come up with the best way forward to get through this next season. And you've got to remember, nothing is forever except for Jesus, right? So let's not let this season ruin us for our whole life. And so this week and next week, because it's going to take two weeks, we'll be talking about the way forward for us here at City Impact Church. It will be different, I know, because I've been talking with pastors. It'll be different to what some churches are doing. Uh, not every church may see it like I see it. And I understand that. And I don't see it how they see it. But every man's got to obey his own conscience. What one man's meat is another man's poison, right? And so the thing is, is what we've got to do is we've got to follow, I believe, the shepherd and the greatest shepherd of all is Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? And so the other thing I just need to say that all things are not crystal clear. I'm sure you know that. I mean, even the government is making it up as they go. That's not being critical. That's just being real. You know that and I know that. I mean, even the questions are on the fly, right? There's a lot of shifting sand. So what I say the next couple of weeks could become totally irrelevant because even um, Mr. Minister Hipkin said this week, well, if this new variant comes or not even know if this new variant, if another outbreak comes, uh, we may go back into lockdown and back into levels. And then um, Grant Robinson said, if the new variant comes, well, lockdown is still on the table. And so, you know, things are shifting sand and I hope and pray that you understand that. And I hope and pray that I could have your, you know, your, your, your compassion towards me on that. So the rules, if I use that word, keep changing. But can I just mention for those who know me, for those who know me in many things, I don't feel that I'm either left or right. I've endeavoured in life to walk a middle path, not extreme on many issues, trying to keep, as it were, a balanced perspective on all things, not always succeeding, of course. I mean, even over this issue on my posts and so forth, some people ask me to speak up more because they haven't got a voice. They're asking me to speak for them. Others are asking me to speak less. But to be true to myself and true before the Lord, I cannot be silent on subjects that I see as unjust, untruthful. And so I do uh, speak some things that maybe some people don't agree with. And I understand that. But some may see that I'm being political. And yet things today are so political. Things of, I mean, the government mandating things, people's jobs. As I've mentioned, the abortion laws, moral laws are political today. I've mentioned the conversion therapy bill and euthanasia, the hate speech bill that's coming. I just uh, heard on Leighton Smith a great letter read by Dr. Muriel Newman and it's worth reading. And it was entitled, Why We Don't Love You, Jacinda Anymore. And please, just if you're a Labour supporter, uh, just bear with me. But she was talking about the situation. It was a very well-written letter and I commend her for it and uh, I'd encourage you to, to read that. But I, I, hope and, I hope and pray that you see and I think you do, your freedoms are being stripped away and that should be a concern to all of us. And that is one of my big issues is freedom of choice, you know that, and uh, also against a two-tier society. I'm concerned 
for the world as it is, no two ways about it. But And like you, I got to live in this world for however long I've got left. And I don't know how long that is. But to be honest, you know, this isn't quite how I saw myself finishing, no two ways about it. Uh, but I'm more concerned, more concerned that this world is the one that my children and my grandchildren, your children, are going to live in. And that's one of the reasons why I'm endeavouring to speak up a bit and not prepare just to hide and, and uh, run for cover and so forth. So endeavouring not to take sides, but endeavouring to support all people in walking what I would consider a middle road. And I know when you're in the middle, you get shot at from both sides, right? And so today, in a way forward, my message today is I want to speak on being one. I want to speak on unity. You know I love the Psalms. I love the Psalms. Psalm 103, verse 1. Behold, and how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to draw together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the bed, the bed of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. Look at it. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Now I'm sure that is what we all want. The blessing of the Lord. Can I ask you, how do we achieve that? We achieve the blessing by staying together and working through the season with the right heart and the right attitude. I said the right heart and the right attitude towards each other. So therefore, I'm gonna take a passage of Scripture, Romans chapter 14, I'm gonna read it and then I'm gonna adapt it. Romans chapter 14, verse one. Receive one, who is weak in faith and not to disputes over doubtful things. Now I could say here, please church, here, receive me. Because I'm not saying who's weak in faith and who's strong in faith here. I'm just saying receive one another, right? So I'll go first and say, hey, would you receive me being weak in faith? Whatever. For, for one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise, or oh, that can't be me, I had a steak last night for the first time for a year. Hallelujah. It's normally fish and salad, but we had steak. American Express sent us a, a Christmas box with, with, with a whole gourmet meal in it, a bottle of wine and everything. I didn't drink the wine, but, but it had steak and salads and dessert and anything, so we had it last night. Any case, praise the Lord. Cherie's bringing around some fish for me this afternoon. So, where am I up to? Eating meat. Let him, <laughs> so don't judge me because I had a meal <laughs> last night. And let not him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has received him. Thank you, Jesus. Who are you to judge one another's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind he observes a day. So first of all, he's talking about eating meat, vegetables, and he's talking about observing days. Observe it to the Lord. He who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. He who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. And to this end, Christ died and rose again and lived again that He might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Look at verse 10. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? I hope you're listening down there at the beach. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess to God. Then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. And to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you're no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. For the one who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, verse 19, therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things which may edify one another. 
Do not destroy, do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offence. It is good neither to eat, drink, uh, eat meat or drink wine or do anything which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it for yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself and what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not of faith is sin. Now, do you really think I'm talking about eating meat here or the particular day of worship, Saturday or Sunday and so forth? I mean, we know meat, although let's be honest, it may come one day, according to the World Economic Forum 2030 goals, which, by the way, our Prime Minister has bought into, eating meat may become a thing of the future. But at the moment, I said I had a steak uh, last night. I know that wasn't a stumbling block to anybody here, uh, I, I hope and trust. It's not a stumbling block to City Impact Church, nor is a day, whatever day you choose to pray and worship, hallelujah, nor a circumcision, I hope, right? Not an issue to us. Alcohol shouldn't be a stumbling block to us either. And uh, obviously, but can I take a liberty of reading this again? And can I take a huge liberty? And I do so very cautiously because I know he who adds to the Word or takes away from the Word will receive, uh, well, we won't talk about it. But I'm gonna paraphrase a, a few things for the sake of, of the topic, endeavouring to be relative to what we are talking about today. Because as I said, eating meat and circumcision and the day to worship isn't the issue of today's City Impact Church. It's not the issue that is dividing people. I've talked about people being divisive on social uh, media platforms. It should not be that way. And I've asked everybody to stop. And I thank God that most of you have adhered to that. Attacking people over social media is ridiculous. And so endeavouring to make it relative, the very thing that is dividing churches, yes, and dividing families and dividing friends, dividing society. And it should not be that way. It should not be that way. I was talking to a lady just the other day, picking up a plant. In fact, I saw Mr. Kendon up there. And uh, she was saying, you know, the, these 10% these, uh, people, they're holding the country to ransom. I said, to be honest, it's the government that's holding the country to ransom. I mean, they said 70%, then 80%. Now they're saying 90%. I said, you got to lay the blame where the blame lies. But in any case, I digress a little bit. But the very thing that is dividing families and churches should not be dividing us. So I'm going to read it through again. Romans chapter 14. Receive one who is weak in faith and not to dispute over doubtful things like COVID. Yes, I'm talking about that. Please remember, I'm not saying who's weak in faith and who's strong in faith. I'm not saying what I am saying. What I am saying is receive one another regardless. Verse 2. For one who believes that he may eat all things, but he who weak is weak eats only vegetable. Let not him who gets vaccinated, you okay, you with me? Despise him who does not get vaccinated. And let not him who does not get vaccinated judge him who is vaccinated. For God has received him. Now, hopefully that's in red letters. The words I'm putting in there, I've asked him to put it in red so you know that it's not, the, the, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But who are you to judge another servant? To his own master, to God, he will stand and fall. Indeed, he will be made to stand for God is able to make him stand. Hallelujah. One person esteems one shot above another. Another esteems every shot alike. Um, that's, that, that's a little, you know, you could smile at that, that verse, couldn't you not? Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes vaccination observes it to the Lord. He who does not observe vaccination to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who is vaccinated is vaccinated to the Lord, I trust, for he gives God thanks. He who does not get vaccinated to the Lord, he does not get jabbed and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself and no one dies to himself. If we live, we live the Lord. If we die, we die the Lord. Therefore, whether we live vaccinated or die or not, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and rose again. He might be Lord both of the dead and living. Why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For as written as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. Then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. You know, I said to somebody, 
If you did a survey of why people got vaccinated, it's true, probably some for their health, some because of jobs they had to, some because they felt um, that it was right for the society, uh, some because of, of pressure, all kinds of situations, right? But if you do or if you don't, you've got to do it as your conscience, as unto the Lord, right? And believe God, which, whichever it is. So each one will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore. Rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or to cause to fall in our brother's way. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. If your brother is grieved because of your vaccination status, right, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy your thoughts and opinions on COVID the one for whom Christ died. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your vaccination status, you're no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your thoughts or your opinions on COVID the one whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, nor is it COVID, nor is it the jab or not the jab, nor is it wearing a mask or not wearing a mask but it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us be, pursue the things which make for peace and the things which may edify one another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of this issue. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offence. It is good neither to eat or drink, eat meat or drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or offended is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself and what he improves, but he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does, I could obviously put in there, uh, you know, other words, because he does not eat from faith for whatever is not a faith is sin. Now forgive me, please, if you think I took too much liberty to add those words in or take away what the word was in there. But I wanna make it very clear today. The early church had some big issues to work through. They were issues that could have split the church. I mean, meat offered to idols was a big issue of the day. Worship on Sunday instead of Saturday, the, the day the Jewish meet in the synagogue, Saturday, and Jesus went to the synagogue as was his habit. But then he rose on the first day of the week being Sunday and the early church gathered on Sunday and that became a big issue. But the biggest issue of all, the biggest issue of all was circumcision. Now, I joke a little bit, but can you imagine showing proof of your circumcision to enter the synagogue? Paul took Timothy and circumcised him because the Jews knew that, he, that Timothy had a Greek dad. And so did Timothy get a circumcision certificate? I'm just asking. Did, did, did he didn't have an iPhone pass or did he flash? I don't know, I'm just saying, but this is what the law did, of course. It separated people. Did you just hear what I said? The law separated people. I'll say that again. The law separated people. So the Apostle Paul was trying to work through this whole issue as he wrote Romans 14. And he also was working it through as he wrote 1 Corinthians 3.1. And I, brethren, and I love reading the Scriptures. You know that. I read a lot of the Bible. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as carnal as the babes in Christ. If we're fighting over vaccination and fighting over, over a free choice and fighting over these things, fighting with one another, it's one thing to have an opinion. It's one thing to talk about it. But I'm not attacking anybody. I'm not, I'm not putting anybody down who is and who isn't. I'm on both sides. I'm for all people, vaccinated and unvaccinated, right? And so the thing is, is if people are fighting over, they're no longer spiritual, but they're carnal, they're babes in Christ. The Apostle Paul says, I fed you with milk, not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive. And even now you're still not able, for you're still carnal. For where there's envy, where there's strife, where there are divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For one says, I'm of Paul. The other says, I'm of Apollos, which is Peter. Are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you have believed? As the Lord gave each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. 
are one, hallelujah, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labour. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder over these past 40 years, I've laid a foundation and now others are building on it, but let each one take care how he builds on it. 1 Corinthians 8, as I bring this to a close. Now, concerning things offered to idols, we know that we have all have knowledge. <laughs> we all know so much today, don't we? You know, all the information coming from all sides. I'm an expert now in all these things. Yeah, right. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. <laughs> and if anyone thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Man, you know, to do this over Zoom, to do this over, over the internet, I'm, my heart is breaking. I wanna look people in the eye. I wanna look my congregation in the eye, my flock in the eye. And as your shepherd, I love you. My heart goes out to you and to try to journey the church. This is just not right. It's to, to journey the church on such an important matter. I had to try to journey Mount Wellington over the building there. I mean, that was huge. This is huge to try to journey people through a camera lens. It's like crazy. Any case, if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and there is no other God but one. You know that letter that um, Dr. Newman wrote with the coming hate speech bill? She would not be able to say the things that she wrote in that. For me to say there's no other God but one, what the Scriptures say, that also will be a great difficulty in the days, in the very immediate days that lie ahead. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is only one God. And he's talking about idols. He's talking about things that other people worship. And I've talked about false gods. You know I have. For there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things and we for Him. And one Lord, yeah. And so like the frog in hot water, people are being heated up. And unless we push back, we've got to push back on this stuff, church. If we don't push back, We'll lose it, no two ways about it. For whom are all things? We are for Him. And one Lord Jesus Christ, whom are all things and through whom we live. And so please, this week, my message is on unity. My message is on being one. Next week, <laughs> you tuned into this week to hear what I'm gonna be talking about next week, the strategy, right? But I, before I share the strategy, I've gotta share my heart and the reason for the strategy. The reason how and why. And as I said, I know it's shifting sand. It could all change this week. Look at, look at, look at the, the government, National Party. I mean, it, you know, a week is a long time in politics. Well, a week is a long time at the moment because things shift so quickly. But we've obviously got it immediately in front of us. And so we've got to deal with the red light straight up, right? How are we going to deal with the red light? How are we going to deal with the orange light? Green light, whatever. But how and why and the way forward.